Welcome back, everyone, to another week of Taurus Tech Talk here at the SG Taurus Company. I'm your host, Matt LePan. And once again, we're talking Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station this week. And to do that, once again, we'll bring on Ken Gott. He's our Kumo expert here at the SG Taurus Company. Ken, thanks for coming on the podcast. Okay, Matt. Thanks for having me. We've talked about internet connectivity setup. We've talked about Kumo Cloud setup, the wireless interface setup. Today, we've mentioned it in the past couple of podcasts. We're finally going to get to the Kumo Station setup. And this is a little more involved than just setting up the wireless interfaces. So Ken's going to walk you through step by step. Okay, just as a reminder, prior to our Kumo Station setup, you want to make sure your Wi-Fi network is on the 2.4 gigahertz with a separate password, as we talked about in our previous podcast on Wi-Fi setup. And again, if you need more info on that, we have the podcast posted on our iTunes stream. We have it on our website. We have it all over the place, or you can call Ken, Phil, Russell, or Mark. They'll send you the podcast directly. They'll get you all taken care of. We are installing the Kumo Station. Model number on that is a PAC-WHS01HC-E. Just to give a brief description on it, basically the Kumo Station contains four relays that allow third-party integration with backup heaters such as hot water baseboard, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, ERVs. These relays have isolated dry contacts with the exception of relays three and four that can be changed over to wet contacts, which will output 24 volts. That might be if you want, need the 24 volts to energize your humidifier or an ERV. So you do have that option. Larger installations, you can install more than one Kumo station. It's a little trickier. You do have to set the second station up as an additional site, but one station usually handles most applications. You can think of your Kumo station as a heating thermostat for your backup heat source. In wiring it, the simplest way to interface to an existing heating system is to parallel your wiring with an existing heating thermostat. Basically, the two wires that go to your heating thermostat are going to go to your Kumo station to the normally open relay contacts. Your Kumo station must be powered with its own 24 volt transformer. Usually a 40 VA or better is fine. Do not power the Kumo station from your circulator panel. In most cases, some of your Taco and Honeywell panels only have a 15 VA transformer, which is not adequate. What are some of the issues that folks would run into if they did do that? Well, the transformer inside a Taco panel is, is not enough power to run your Kumo station. You know, you could uh, have relay chattering or possibly burn out some circuit boards. So you want to make sure you have enough power going to it. We know that the 24 volt source is there on your Taco panel, but it's not enough to power your Kumo station. Okay, we'll go over some of the installation setup now. This particular scenario that I'm going to describe to you is a setup where the Kumo station is not directly wired to an indoor unit. One of the options is you can interlock one indoor unit to your Kumo station for various fan type interlock control. The one I'm going to be describing is probably the most popular where you're going to have a separate wireless interface connected to your Kumo station that will communicate with your Kumo cloud. We're using the same wireless interface as we do on our indoor units, that PAC-USWHS002-WF-1. One additional item that is needed, you do need an outside air sensor, which is a Honeywell c 70 89U1006. Those should be already installed prior to your setup of your Kumo station. And if you need more on setting up the Kumo Cloud wireless interfaces, check out our podcast that we already did with Ken. We go through setup and installation of that as well. That's correct, Matt. The setup is, is very similar, but a little bit different. One thing we want is to start with our Kumo station is powered off. You want to locate switch bank SW1 and switch number 5 wants to be turned on. That's using the wireless interface and a non-interlocked indoor unit. If it was interlocked, switch number 5 would be shut off. But in this case, we want that turned on. If any other relay configuration is required, other than normally open dry contacts, changes should be made at this point before powering up our station. In other words, if you wanted to make relays 3 and 4, a wet contact outputting 24 volts, you'd want to change your dip switches at this point. 
That being said, we're ready to power up our Kumo station. When we power up our Kumo station, you want to note the LED number one. It should be flashing, which tells us we have communications between the station and our wireless interface. LED 2 should be on solid, indicating that our outdoor air sensor is in normal status. On our wireless interface, again we should notice the blue light. It should be flashing four times, telling us we're in Bluetooth mode and we're ready for pairing. If for some reason we're not getting the four flashes like before that we talked about, we want to depress the button closest to the blue light for five seconds, which puts it into Bluetooth pairing mode, and watch for those four flashes of the blue light. So before an installer gets to the portion where they're going to be integrating Kumo Station with the app, all they need to make sure they're doing is installing everything, making sure that switch number five in SW1 is on, and then the LEDs are acting as normal, there's no additional steps they need to make? That's correct. At that point, we're ready to uh, set up Kumo Station in our app. So we have our app already preloaded from when we added Kumo Cloud to our indoor units. First thing we do is we again want to, in our app, tap Settings, System Setup, Installer Settings, enter our PIN 9999 tap the site name, advanced, and at this point we add our Kumo station as an accessory. We do not add it as an indoor unit. We add it as an accessory. Very important. Ken, when you're adding the Kumo station to the app, why are you adding it as an accessory? You said it's very important. What problems could a, an installer run into if they added it as a unit? Like you said, you, you don't want to do that, but if they did, what are some of the problems they could face and how can they back that out? Yeah, we have it happen all the time. Guys think they're adding the Kumo station as in another indoor unit. And you wouldn't see any of the options. You wouldn't see backup heaters. You wouldn't see humidifiers. So you, you kind of know you're in the wrong spot. And you just have to back out of it. Again, go into your setup, your advanced section, add accessories, and then you're off and running again. At this point, you'll see the accessories you're going to have a choice of backup heater, humidifier, dehumidifier, or ventilation. Select one and you hit next. In this case, we'll select a backup heater. It's going to give you the choice of which output you want to activate for your heating output, which relay. You're going to have a choice of one through four. Select one of those. In this case, we could select one. Hit our next. You will see the outdoor air temperature displayed. Make sure it's valid. At that point, we want to select which indoor unit will control our backup heater. You'll see the list of all your indoor units. Just select one of those and hit next. At this point, you will see select heater options. You'll see various selections, outdoor air temperature changeover, delays, other options. We'll get into those at a later date, and at that point you want to save your settings, and you're ready to go ahead and add your next heater, humidifier, dehumidifier, you just repeat the steps all over again for your next channel output. There is one bug we do need to talk about with, with Mitsubishi is working on it, and they're going to notify us as soon as the fix is done. This case only comes up when you're selecting a humidifier. The humidifier has a fan selection. If you select to have the fan turn on with a call of humidity. This is a problem. What it does is it changes the system mode to fan and after the humidifier is satisfied it will not return to the heating mode. So at this point you want to make sure you always select the fan operation for no when you're setting up a humidifier. Great. Well we want to thank Ken for coming on again. Another great podcast here. This time on Kumo Station. Again check out our website. You'll be able to find all our Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station information. We have some classes. Keep an eye out on our training section if you want to train your installers and your techs on Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station. We've offered some classes at all of our locations. Make sure you're checking out our training page. Those fill up quickly, so as soon as you see them, make sure you're hopping on there. Keep an eye out for that as well. I want to thank Ken again for coming on. I want to thank you all out there for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. You can do it in a bunch of different places. You can go iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, a lot of different places you can find us. Search Taurus Tech Talk. Follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Use the hashtag Taurus Tech Talk. We hear your ideas out there. That's why we're doing a lot of these podcasts and want to make sure we're still getting your ideas. So make sure to leave us a note there. And as always, you can catch all of our podcasts right on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcasts. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Taurus Tech Talk.